Да? То есть секундным запаздыванием. Так. Бы? Дорогие коллеги, да, Калекс, я рад открыть утреннюю сессию сегодня. И, как вы знаете, у нас сегодня первый доклад Павла Игоревича Плотникова. Вот название его доклада «Geometry Tools and Shape Optimization». Значит, mm -hmm. У вас 45 минут. Прекрасно. Пожалуйста. Спасибо. Так. Let, us, let me start. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer and Alexander Leonidovich especially for the kind invitation to deliver a lecture at this important conference. Okay, let me start. Uh, the topic of the talk is uh, shape optimization problem. Shape optimization problems. It is some branch of variational calculations. Since it is well developed in the world, but in Russia it is not well known, unfortunately. Uh, the main application is structure design, in particular in aerodynamics and elasticity. Some kind of tomography problem, Im image processing, and so on, so on. But in order to be clear, I focus it on the simplest, very simplest, to be as simple as possible problems. And now I try to formulate it. 
Moreover, in two decades, okay. there is some about configuration. There is some big hole to domain omega, uh, which contains some inclusion omega i. It is supposed that uh, inclusion also is simply connected and is bounded by some uh, Jordan curve gamma, which is interface. Therefore, we have two subdomains, uh, inclusion, omega i, and some annulus, double connected, uh, omega e. Okay? It is just configuration, our configuration. Okay? Next, we have, uh, first it is so-called single measurement transmission problem. Uh, a little bit, it's a very simple problem for formulation. Let us fix two functions, the divided, uh, then define it on the boundary of whole total domains omega. Uh, there is some natural condition. H is the trace of Sobolev function on T omega and J. For simplicity, I take simply uh, belong to L2. Next, let us consider coefficient A. It is, uh, assume that it is equal to 1 in the NUS omega E and some positive constant A0, therefore it is color function. Take only two values uh, in omega i. Then, suppose that omega is occupied by some field, there is different physical interpretation of this field, which satisfies this equation. If solution outside of gamma is smooth, it is just a standard transmission problem. Okay. Now it is necessary to find gamma in such a way that uh, the extra boundary condition, Neumann condition, uh, was satisfied. Therefore, it is all determined problem which look like Cauchy problem for the elliptic equation. Okay. The other version is more simple. It is so-called impedance uh, problem, impedance identification problem. In this case, it is assumed that uh, omega i is empty, something vacuum, but on gamma there is the extra condition u is equal to zero. But we focus it on the first problem, transmission problem, and now I repeat briefly each formulation. Here you can see, therefore you have elliptic equation, in some sense unknown coefficient, but very trivial, this wise constant. And then you have to find gamma interface such that extra condition six was satisfied on gamma. This is our problem. Okay. First of all, uh, of course, this problem has no solution, and it is no, uh, there is no ch chance to find some solution because it's simply absence. In practice, uh, the, uh, this problem replaced variation on problems. The, we introduced some cost functional. We discuss it later. Uh, where J capital J is vanishes if and only if gamma is the exact solution of our problem and positive in the, in the opposite case. And uh, A is some class of admissible inclusion or shapes. Uh, here arises a very interesting question, what is the shape? Or what is the shape? Okay, let us go for them. The simplest way to define the cost function is look like this. But it is the worst, it is a very bad idea. In fact, uh, the theory works with, you know, uh, with other functional, cost functional. It is very bad. Yes. 
Litko which named convagelius function. Functional in our case, it is look like very simple, like this and this, where W is a solution to the Dirichlet problem, and uh, V is a solution of Neumann problem. If V and W can sign, that we have a uh, solution of our transmission problem. Okay. Uh, two questions um, we have to, it is very important and you have to realize that there is two questions. First question, existence theorem. In shape optimization problems, the existence of solution is trivial and not interesting. I try to explain. For example, let us consider the set of obstacles such ki i it is characteristic function of obstacle is compact is l1 if it is very general setting but in this case in this class the minimum obviously exists and there is no nothing to do it is two lines the second question which is more important for theory is to develop uh, more or less robust and efficient algorithm for solving. Numeric and algorithm, it is the main topic of the theory. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot work. I have to note that J is geometric functional. This means that depend, depends on the gamma, like a curve, a set in, on the space. It is pure geometric quantities. Unfortunately, we have to work with emergence and parameterized curves. And uh, this means the gamma is some image of f of 1, of unit circle, or in other words, it is periodic function of the angle variable theta. Uh, then the function, the functional becomes a function on the space of the immersion of the mapping from the circle uh, to plane. It is not good. Uh, uh, this leads to many troubles mathematically. Uh, okay, now I can uh, I introduce some notation. J is trivial things is a first quadratic, the only coefficient on this first fundamental form. Uh, there is S is Arcoi uh, length variable. It is uh, the derivative with respect to S is defined on this. Uh, I have to note the main variable is theta. S is some kind of auxiliary variable. Then below you find tau, which is tangent unique vector. And then the normal vector, which is have positive orientation with respect to tau, is defined by the last line. Very simple stuff. Okay. Now uh, we have to define uh, the Mostly algorithm, algorithms are based on the steepest discount method. Are based on the steepest discount method. There are four. It is based on the so, so called shape calculus. Uh, shape calculus means the shape derivative of the function. Why we do with immersion, we can define uh, some perturbation of our immersion f. And then the shape derivative of this function, it is linear uh, function over uh, the perturbation. It defines here 11 form your, you can see it. Uh, but we have to go further. And the last step in many practical cases becomes very non-trivial, but we simply, you know, not in our case. We have to define the gradient of uh, uh, our definition is a little bit different from the other one. And uh, uh, we say, assume for a moment that the shape derivative has some representation with some function phi. Okay? Phi m. 
the repositories has the integral representation. It is not okay if solutions and F and gamma is smooth, it is almost obvious, but in many publications, for example, we can find that the gradient is distribution and there is many objections that they also don't understand what they are talking about. Uh, but we, we do with very nice case and differential and the gradient of phi dj it is just this vector of u phi m it is by geometry it is it is for phi which for any k in any case but it have some geometric meaning that the differential should be the, this gradient should be directed or along normal uh, because uh, this tangent direction is motion of gamma along itself, it's simply zero. The calculation of this fact is not real. Uh, yes. Okay, the stiffest discount method is defined by this way, where delta is the step of is some kind of step, small parameter, which is in our disposition. And F0 is some configuration. Initial configuration. Yeah. Uh, also, I have to note one important thing. Uh, in practice, there is no idea to find optimal form. There is no task which is impossible. Or even something which is more or less good. Idea is the following. Usually engineering, engineering, choose F0, in some, there on intuition level, like some almost optimal. And what theory can do to improve this result by three, four, maximum five percent? Therefore, the, the task is not to find. Uh, uh, the task is a little bit improve the F0. And it is five percent, it is great achievement. Because in aerodynamics, this reduces, the, for example, the cost of aircraft a lot of 5% beam, reduce the cost of aircraft up to 20%. Yeah. Okay. If we divide the both side by delta and pass to the limit, we arrive at our main goal to the dynamical system, which is written in this way. Okay. And really this system or this iteration scheme is the main object of studies. Unfortunately, this system is very bad. And uh, there is calculation unstable by many, many, many reasons. It, in fact, it does not work. And the problem is how to improve. Uh, the very interesting only approximate solution. Uh, the, I try to use idea. My idea is not new. It dates back to famous Mumford Shach, Shach functional in the image processing uh, to regularize the energy by, but because we have this geometry with some geometry quantity. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah sorry. What I'm saying. For convergeous function of dj and even Gaussian d2j formula are known, and you can find it on uh, this formula. It is, it is we really see that it is quadratic form on the of the normal derivative of v and normal derivative of w. A little bit complicated, but uh, in fact. In order to calculate it, you have to calculate the normal derivative of V and W solution to Dirichlet and Neumann problem. Okay. Now it is important person. It is the curvature. It is defined by this way. Curvature vector. It is directed along normal, which is obvious. Yes. Then introduce two energy. First, this is classic. Euler elastic energy, more precisely Euler bending energy, and second is capillarity, simply length of interface gamma. Then 
created by technical reason, but everybody added in this theory, and then take the final, uh, the, uh, replace J by this combination, we apply as regularization parameter, but for, for theoretical study, is we may take it simply zero. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, it is the, this is well known, well developed theory, very well developed theory. There is a number of problems. Of course, the differential, the gradient of this energy is it was calculated many years ago by a number of people. And the resulting formula is the following. However, there is some uh, detail which leads to many mathematical troubles. Here, gradient S, it is not derivative with respect to S. They call it connection, but I am not sure that it is correct. Uh, and then it is simply projection. Uh, derivative with respect to S on the space orthogonal to tangent vector on the normal space. Therefore, uh, this is some kind of uh, uh, right hand side 18 is automatically orthogonal to tangent vector. And uh, this leads also to problems. But um, there is no reason for discussion it is given. Okay. Gradient flow is defined by the following. Uh, gradient flow is defined by the following uh, equation. Some people would call it a degenerate parabolic equation, but it is, I think, it is incorrect because gradient S, uh, it is not uh, parabolic operator, it is projection of parabolic operator onto normal space. This is some kind of ultra parabolic problem or something like this. Okay. Yes. Therefore, we are focused on these studies, on studies of this problem. Uh, but before this, I, before study of this problem, I have uh, to make the physical one remark. The physical meaning has only gamma without self-intersection. There is a huge amount of literature devoted to different criterion of non-self-intersections for curve in terms of curvature. Uh, but uh, one of the last, and uh, from my point of view, is the best. It is one dimensional version of the celebrated uh, Li Yao theorem. And uh, it is formulated by this way. Where C is, as well, uh, where C is some test from Euler elastic. Uh, there is Euler elastic which has like ellipse shape, but the limiting has some shape of the uh, age or infinity. Therefore, in fact, we can replace this condition but but any quantitative condition who guarantees the absence of... Okay. Now, denote by this set, it is the set of all immersion when the curve have no self-intersection. In other words, F is embedding. And then, okay, and that's all uh, of the class C1. Okay, here's the main result. Left F0 belongs to this class. 
then uh, and also have four square integral derivative. Then there exists solution to our systems, also from this class 22. And the following alternative, or t is equal to infinity, or for some limit, if it is bounded, then at the limit, the, the coil gum have got some self-intersects, or maybe touch the, uh, out the boundary of g omega. Therefore, it is exist until the, until the end. Okay. And now I have to some historical remark and say this uh, for gradient flow for oil are elastic. Uh, it is, uh, I pick it up, uh, choose some more or less random way, but the most important paper from my point of view, it is the paper Buff Sriosov, Jewick, Kuvert, and Shatley, two German, Germanist geometer. Okay. There is also by this also and there was some uh, two-dimensional version of this problem when graph is replaced by surface. But in this case, only local results are available. Okay. Proof main steps. Three steps are essential. Uh, proof is standard. First, local existence theorem. Based on the sum, no classic theory of uh, PDE. And the uh, idea is to prove the, the existence of infinitely smooth solution on the sum small interval if initial data belong to the class to infinity. Next step is the global estimate. It does not depend, it depends, on, in fact, they don't depend on T. And the last step, it is the time extension up to blow up or up to infinity. Standard. I all papers are focused on the step two. All papers, all works. Therefore, I do the following. I follow this way. But the first step is a little bit tricky, and we discuss it later. There is some questions at this point. Uh, first of all, uh, the difference between this uh, the main step is uh, the first step which is not what must consider it in the existing theory is estimates of cost functional, convergelius functional, uh, because uh, it is some new, uh, it is some addition to existing theory. Uh, I noted the cost vagelius function is a quadratic combination of normal derivative of solution to elliptic equations. There are the question about estimates of normal derivative of elliptic equation depending uh, on uh, the interface gamma. Therefore, it is a question about depending of solution transmission problem uh, about the shape of interface. The first result is the following. Uh, no. Yeah. Assume the following condition are satisfied. First is bounded of energy, it is satisfied in any case. The first is, uh, the second is the non-intersection condition. It may be replaced by, by any quantity of non-intersection condition. And the first, then the last is the positive distance between interface and the boundary of whole to domain, okay? Under this assumption, we have uh, let you be some solution of this elliptic equation. Uh, I don't assume some boundary conditions. The only restriction is the u is sobel of class W12. And if it is the case, we have the following estimates. The constant uh, T depends on all quantities in the condition I3I. Okay? 
Ah, here important to plus and U minus is restriction of this solution U, uh, auxiliary function U on the omega E and omega I. Omega I and omega E. Okay, the second result is some extension of this. Uh, suppose you have the same situation, but now I would like to get better estimates for derivative of high order. This looks like the following two versions. The first, like previous one, uh, it is curious that in the 24 you have only this connection derivative, uh, but it is not. And the second one is the same, but with uh, some uh, yes, with the some extra small parameter like interpolation and equality, like in Young and equality. Therefore, we have this estimate. Yes, the first prior estimate is trivial. We have anti gradient method, hence, the energy is decreases in time, and then does not, it is bounded by initial energy, which is denoted by E knowledge, some constant, and it is. Uh, Okay, it's trivial. Uh, some conditions corollary which is trailing that length of the uh, curve uh, interface is uniformly bounded from below and above. It is important because we have considered S like independent variable and use Sobolev embedding theorem and something like that. Interpolation and equality. Okay, the second estimate it is a little bit tricky, but uh, it is based on uh, on this identity, on this inequality, which obtained it by multiplication both sides of equation by k, uh, because of estimates of differential of j, the right and sum is bounded, and this yields uh, very, uh, very good estimates, and dsk. Uh, that the derivative of k is integrable over square, and the estimates c depends on the uh, parameters in condition e three e, therefore i three i, therefore it is some kinds of the same uniform estimates like energy estimates. The third estimate, which is the key estimate in the theory of this uh, gradient flow for all equations for gradient flow for oil energy. Uh, it is not mine, uh, of course. Uh, it is based on the following uh, inequality, which is obtained by differentiation both sides of equation by T, and then multiplied by derivative dt of f. In fact, it is very complicated stuff because it is necessary to. I know that ds does not commute with dt. And therefore, you have a, the main feature of this series the estimation of commutator with helping of uh, Galliard near inequality. Therefore, it is very, very, very complicated stuff. But I would like to uh, focus it on the last term, which is new how. Uh, here sigma, uh, it is result of multiplication. Here sigma is uh, time variable because uh, it, uh, I choose this notation only because uh, they need extra variable for integ like integration variable. Uh, the difficulty is that the calculation of uh, time variable, the time derivative of the gradient. It is uh, J. It is very complicated stuff, and uh, it is not so simple. It is required calculation of the second uh, Gaussian of J. It is it is exists formula, but it is therefore maybe the other way, maybe simple first, simply first we consider our integral. Next, it is in some kinds equivalent of check integration by parts. The second integral, then the sigma square of f and can eliminate but using an equation. And finally, I have this one. Uh, the right hand side, the second term 
is present in this on the left hand side is positive in our estimates. But the first term, term in this product was estimated by our by our lemma for estimating group J. Therefore, I have got this estimate. Uh, and it is enough. Finally, I get the following estimate. It is the third estimate. And uh, one of consequence of the estimates is uh, uh, very good properties of F. It seems that for every T, the curve gamma is the class C4 or C5 or something like this. Uh, in literature, people continue and prove finally, using bootstrap arguments, that finally solution is infinite dimension, in, infinitely smooth if the function is smooth. Okay. What I uh, now I am close to finish. Yeah. Uh, the last things we, which we have to discuss is the local existence theory. Okay. Uh, but before this, I would like to say that as arc length is some sense uh, our auxiliary variable. Uh, real variable with theta. And then in order to establish connection, we have uh, to estimate the first fundamental form, simply one constant j, function j. This is, it leads to some troubles. I try to explain that something is wrong in the very beginning. The functional energy is geometric functional. It depends only on the shape of gamma like uh, space. Therefore, it does not define parameterization. Any parameterization, the possible nothing. Uh, this function of itself, energy, does not define the first fundamental form. You can choose any parameterization. But now we are looking for immersion, and we have some parameterizations that need to wait. Therefore, the question of estimating of J it is a separate question. And but the, unfortunately, we have the classic equation of this time. But K by second estimate is bounded. But you have something like boundness of DTF. It is non-trivial stuff. And then we have. Uh, in the say, in the papers, this question is not. They also does not give many details, but some problem exists. Okay, now local theorem. Uh, everything was okay, and every paper starts from the from the statement that the local solution exists. But the proof are only our only sketches. It look like the uh, some details, it will be better to have some details. It is not only my opinion. Recently, uh, Ralph and Spanner uh, considered the question on the local solvability is more detailed, but they proved the local existence only from a defined equation. You can see in this equation, DTF uh, is replaced by some connection with respect to T, and the, the second equation is just a consequence of the first one. And then um, I think the detail was still be given. Uh, the trouble is what? The problem is what? The real is that our equation may be written in the form. The expression is brackets is just simply a trivial elliptic iterator. And the difficulty is the presence of the project P, pi, capital pi. Capital pi is the matrix of the rank one. Therefore, it's a strongly degenerate case. Uh, Rafa Spanier uh, simply remove pi, then solve parabolic equation, and then multiply both sides of the result by pi. They give this result. Okay. And therefore, the problem need 
more careful analysis, more careful analysis. And the, I, would, I recall that if you would like to determine the type of the nonlinear equation, you have to study linearized equation, yes? And then determine the type of the linearized equation. I follow this uh, line, and the, in mathematics, uh, try to use so-called measures. Um, uh, nash moser scheme, it is complicated from the point of view of functional analysis, but very good from the point uh, in order to check the solubility conditions. It gives only local results. Okay. Now I introduce this operator. Uh, our equation can be written in the form. Then linearization of this operator delta psi is standard metrum. Then by nash moser theorem, it's sufficient to prove the existence of inverse operator even unbounded, even unbounded. Some inverse should exist. Maybe, maybe unbounded, it doesn't matter. Okay, let us consider this equation and trick is the follow. It is infinitism, it is a question written on the infinitism, infinitism of level and make the following decomposition of unknown. Now you are known, sorry, the same notation, the V and W. V it is projection of the tangent and W of the normal. And also decompose the right hand side. And uh, after long, long calculation, we obtain two equations. For normal equation, it just will be really parabolic equation. But uh, with dependence of tangent v, but in some low term. But remarkable property of this problem that for v, we have ODE. Therefore, our problem inherits the problem of nonlinear problem, linear problem. Inherits the properties of nonlinear problem. It decomposes onto parabolic equation of the normal direction and uh, V and OGE in the tangent direction. In principle, we can uh, eliminate V by solving OGE by standard formula, substitute in the first equation and obtain what it will be Volterra type equation for W, because it will be a parabolic equation plus Volterra type operator. Uh, it is enough to apply the Schmoser theory and to be sure that the local existence exists. In some sense, the problem solved. But if you look at the literature in more detail, you find that the author, I, I finish it in a minute. Uh, that also uh, refer to the theory of invariant manifolds, center manifolds, and like this. Um, for me, it is some kind of miracle. In principle, it is possible to reduce this system to center of manifold, but um, you need this, the analysis of spectrum this operator. Uh, you have that lambda to null is a variable coefficient, maybe change the sign. Therefore, if you remove the f for the t, you can see the spectral problem. You have continuous spectrum and so on, so on, so on. The other things, it is only for linear problem. For nonlinear problem, of course, this trick does not work. Uh, therefore, uh, I, I believe that we can uh, build some invariant manifold. But I think the detail should be given, and real local proof should be lengthy, lengthy, maybe 50 pages, maybe something more. Therefore, I don't want to say that something is wrong. In theory. Of course, amount listed papers, uh, they are wrong, a couple of simply wrong ones. But uh, in general, everything is correct. But I insist that some details should be given. Okay. Now I would like to think.
Ah. Two minutes. Two minutes. Ah, okay, about possible generalization. I can replace it, this transmission problem without difficulty, for example, for linear elasticity problem. Calculations are the same. Uh, it is not a big pity. Uh, Two-dimensional case, moving surface or 3D. Difficult stuff. Difficult stuff. Only local theory is available. But um, in two-dimensional case, if the energy is unbounded, the curve gamma is C1 plus alpha. But in three-dimensional case, when gamma is two-dimensional surface, it is surface with bounded with more energy. It is not. It is not uh, good things. Uh, maybe some uh, singularities like bubbling, uh, formation of hidden branching points. Everything may happen, and this. Theory only work on for local. It is difficult stuff. Okay, and there is, of course, uh, and that I think that's all because the other ideas was to use random data because random data is have some smoothing effect, but it is it is another story. Thank you. Thank you to speaker. Oh, uh, we have time for questions, please. Uh, there is a parameter epsilon also, and uh, all the estimates should depend on it. Uh, but yeah. it's not taken to be one, and uh, how the estimates uh, really involve this parameter, and uh, which kind of, most probably you can extract the conditional stability estimate from the algorithm. So which kind of estimate is this? Uh, everything disappears when uh, Epsi tends to zero, uh, but really and for smooth solution, nobody to study uh, the limits. Frankly speaking, no budget to study the problem in this formulation, but there is geometrical application to consider shapes like, yeah, yeah, I'm not the first, there is some uh, branch of theory, but it is, the idea is slightly basic to consider this. The space of shapes like infinite, like infinite dimension of Gilbert manifold uh, generated by Wilmore metric. And therefore, it is uh, nobody do this, and uh, there is a problem. There is a problem. There is a lot of problem. Uh, uh, from this point of view, people start the iteration scheme, uh, looking for the how it converges, this converges, and discover that there is a huge number of problems. Uh, roughly speaking, work not well. And then, because instability, self-intersection, and so on, so on, so on. And the idea was to improve this method and give something more or less robust. Uh, it was very unstable problem, an issue problem. What to do? Okay, so, other questions? No. Okay. Let us say, Thanks to speaker again. We will start after eight minutes, please. Five to eleven.
Let us continue our morning session. In our next speaker, Andrei Egevich Shuparevich, his talk, uh, Short Wave Asymptotic Solutions for Evolutionary Equation with Arbitrary Varying Coefficient. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers. It's a great pleasure for me to speak at this conference. It's a famous and brilliant conference. Uh, on differential equations, and uh, 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 my talk will be about short wave asymptotics for uh, partial differential equations of evolutionary type in the case when the coefficients of these equations contain singularities of certain types. Uh, uh, it is very well known that uh, if we deal with uh, short wave asymptotics for uh, evolutionary equations uh, with completely smooth coefficients, then uh, there is a um, famous theory, uh, mathematically it was formulated by Viktor Pavlovich Maslov, and uh, the main idea of the theory is that uh, these short wave asymptotics are governed by certain geometrical objects. For different type of solutions, these geometrical objects can vary somehow. Uh, it, it can be either Lagrangian surfaces in the classical phase space which uh, evolve along the trajectories of classical Hamiltonian systems. Or uh, it can be some more sophisticated objects, complex vector bundles over isotropic surfaces, which also evolve along <laughs> classical trajectories. Uh, but in any way, uh, these geometrical objects, they completely define uh, the short wave asymptotics for the solution of the corresponding Cauchy problem for evolutionary equation. Uh, but uh, if... Uh, uh, it, 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 there is a great number of applications where we have to deal with uh, equations with singular co coefficients. The coefficients can contain singularities. And uh, uh, if we have singularities, then mm, uh, the application of this method directly is impossible. But uh, it is more or less clear that these geometrical objects, uh, they must change somehow in the points which correspond to the support of singularities of, of, of coefficients. And uh, then aim of my talk is to present several, uh, the most simple examples, uh, which illustrate how these geometrical objects uh, change in the, in the points of singularities, in the points of the support of singularities of the coefficients of the corresponding equations. These singularities can be either honest singularities, so the coefficients can be distributions, or uh, they can be asymptotic singularities, so they can depend on, on small parameter in such a way that the weak limit of these coefficients also, also are singular. Uh, yes, this, this is a, a, a joint work with uh, Olga Shigartsova and Anna Aleluyeva, and here is the outline of the talk. So first of all, I will uh, remind uh, the main steps of this uh, well-known Maslow theory, uh, which uh, uh, makes it possible to construct short wave asymptotics for equations with smooth coefficients. So uh, to be more concrete, I will remind uh, two geometrical objects which uh, make it possible to, to compute this, this asymptotic. Uh, these are Lagrangian manifolds and the complex vector bundles over isotropic manifolds. And then I will speak about uh, more or less two different examples uh, in which we will have singular coefficients. The first one will be non-stationary time-dependent Schrodinger equation with delta potential. Uh, delta potential will be concentrated on some uh, surface of co-dimension one, and uh, then I will speak about wave equation uh, uh, in which the uh, the coefficient in this wave equation, the velocity of, of uh, uh, the velocity of light or the velocity of speed, uh, also has singularities. But uh, these singularities will be uh, singularities such singularity that uh, the weak limit of this coefficient will be. So. First of all, I will remind the classical theory. Let's consider the evolutionary equation of this type. Here h is some uh, real-valued function, smooth function of two n variables in R to n. It's a classical Hamiltonian. And by replacing this, uh, this coordinate speed by, by the derivative with respect to x, we obtain say, the differential operator, which is written down in the right-hand side. Uh, I will skip some, some technical conditions, which uh, uh, which guarantee the, the good uh, properties of the solutions of this equation. Uh, namely, I will always suppose that this operator is self-adjoint, 
so the, the, the equation of this type is just a Schrodinger equation, which, uh, 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 which uh, defines the unit revolution of the, of the function u. Okay. Uh, and for this equation, we consider the initial condition of this type. This is the, the short wave, uh, the short wave packet. Uh, the functions phi naught and s naught uh, are supposed to be smooth, and uh, the function phi naught will be the function with compactly supported. Okay. Uh, uh, there are two different variants of the initial conditions of this type, namely the function s naught can can be either real valued or complex valued. If we have a real valued function, then uh, uh, the initial condition is the, has the form of some uh, rapidly oscillating wave packet. So we have some uh, some area in n-dimensional space, which is the support of this function. Inside this area, we have a rapid, oscilla rap rapid oscillations, which are defined by this exponent, because epsilon here is, is in, in the denominator. Yes, uh, I, of course, I, I have forgotten to say that the, the, the problem is to, to compute the asymptotics, of, the asymptotics of the solution of this Cauchy problem as epsilon tends to zero. Okay, this is short wave asymptotics. Uh, so, uh, uh, how to how how to compute the asymptotic? So if this function is not as real, then uh, uh, we have to do the following: we have to consider the initial Lagrangian surface in classical phase space. In the space R to n with coordinates x and p, we have to consider the Lagrangian surface, which is uh, defined by this equation. Uh, to be more concrete, we have to consider not complete this surface, but this surface. The support of this function phi naught. Okay, uh, and then we have to shift the surface uh, by the phase flow of the classical Hamiltonian system. So we have to, to consider the symbol of this operator H, uh, consider the Hamiltonian system, and and we have to shift shift this uh, initial Lagrangian surface uh, with res uh, with respect to the phase flow of the system. Then we have to define some volume form on this shifted surface. In order to do this. We have to consider the the simplest possible volume form on the initial surface, which is simply dx, and then again shift it along the trajectory. Now we have a pair Lagrangian surface and the volume form of this, and the theorem, which is due to Maslow about 60, 1965, states that under certain technical conditions on the on the function h. Uh, uh, the solution of, of this Cauchy problem, which is written down here, can be extended uh, uh, in asymptotic area. This asymptotic area has the following form. Here, K denotes some technical analytical tool, which was defined by Maslow. It is called Maslow canonical operator. Uh, uh, I will not uh, uh, speak about the concrete details of this technical tool. Uh, uh, actually, this, this tool uh, is the operator which acts from the space of smooth compactly supported functions on the Lagrangian surface to the space of smooth functions of x. So for each t, we will have in the right-hand side the function of x. So we'll, we'll have the function of x and t. And we have to apply this operator to, to a formal sum, which is written down here. The, this uh, sign means the asymptotic area. Uh, and the, the functions phi k are, uh, are defined by certain explicit formulas. For example, if we, we are interested in the main part of asymptotic solution in the leading part, then we have to do simply the following. We have to consider the initial function phi naught, which is the initial condition. And, of course, uh, uh, think about this function as the function on the initial surface, Lagrangian surface. We have to shift this function along the trajectories, along the classical trajectory. Now, the second variant of this theory uh, uh, works if this function S0 is, is uh, complex valued. If this function S0 is complex valued, and I will suppose that the imaginary part of this function is non-negative, then we have some sort of so-called squeeze state. So in the points where the imaginary part of this function is positive, uh, this exponent decays exponentially in epsilon. Okay? So uh, we have the picture something like this. We have some some set in n-dimensional space, and the initial condition is localized and is localized in the small vicinity of this set. Uh, the, uh, the strict uh, conditions are following. Uh, so we have to consider the, this function as not. I will suppose that this function is not as complex valued. The imaginary part is non-negative. 
and I will suppose that this imaginary part vanishes on some smooth k-dimensional surface. Uh, I will denote the surface by w naught. And here is some. I'm sorry. Here, here, of course, w naught was written. Uh, and here is some con condition of non non degeneracy uh, of the second differential of the imaginary part of this function as not. So uh, uh, this uh, surface w naught is somehow asymptotic uh, support of the initial of the initial condition. The initial function is localized in the small vicinity of this w naught. Now, how to construct asymptotics? Again, we have to consider some to, to construct first some geometrical object. The geometrical object in this case has the following form. Uh, we can consider we have to consider this surface W naught, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and we have to uh, consider the corresponding uh, isotropic surface in R to n. So the surface is defined by this equation. X is the point of W naught. Is a k-dimensional k isotropic surface. And then we have to construct an n-dimensional complex vector bundle over this surface. Uh, the fibers of, of this vector bundle uh, are defined by this equation. They are defined by the second differential of the initial phase. So we have a, a complex vector bundle over real k-dimensional surface. And then again, this complex vector bundle is called massless complex germ. And then uh, we have to do just the same thing as in the previous case. We have to shift this bundle along the trajectories of the corresponding classical Hamiltonian system. We have to shift the base uh, W0 uh, uh, with respect to the phase flow of this Hamiltonian system, and we have to shift the fibers of this bundle with respect to the differential, of course. And the uh, theorem, which is also due to Maslow, states that, again, under certain technical conditions on the Hamiltonian function, uh, the, the solution of the corresponding Cauchy problem can be represented as an asymptotic theory of this type. So the formula is just more or less the same as in the previous case, only we have to change this analytical tool. Instead of Maslow canonical operator on Lagrangian surface, we have to deal with so-called Maslow canonical operator on the isotropic surface with complex germ. It means that it is a tool which uh, makes it possible to, to associate with some function which is defined on the isotropic surface, not Lagrangian, but isotropic, uh, some function of, of, of us. Okay. And again, if we, we are interested in the, in the main part of asymptotic solution, we have to shift the initial, the initial function. Uh, now here is the simplest example of this analytical tool, which is, which is written down here. In the simplest case, the, the, this analytical tool is also very simple. So let's suppose that the, this, uh, this W0 is just a point. So we have some initial condition which is localized in the small vicinity of a point. Then uh, uh, the Maslow complex germ, it, this complex vector bundle, is just one uh, unique complex plane which is defined by this equation. And uh, we can choose the initial phase in this form. Here P0 is some real vector and X0 is also some real vector and Q0 is some complex symmetric matrix with the positive imaginary part. Uh, so in this case, uh, the, the asymptotic solution of the problem will be represented in this form, which is just something like WKB exponent, only this function S is complex valued, and it is written down here by the explicit formula. Here P, uh, the capital, and X, the capital, are the trajectory, define the trajectory of this Hamiltonian system which starts from the point X0 and T0. And Q of T uh, can be computed by solving the, the, linearized, the linearized Hamiltonian So the main problem which I would like to discuss is what happens if the coefficients of initial condition, of initial equations, sorry, uh, can contain singularity. And first of all, I will, uh, I will study uh, the first example, which is Schrodinger equation with delta potential. So this is equation of this type. I suppose that X is point of n-dimensional space, Euclidean space. Delta here is the standard Laplacian. So here we have a standard Schrodinger operator. I suppose that V of X is a smooth function. And uh, uh, here we have some, some additional term, which is uh, delta function. Uh, uh, which is concentrated on some surface of four dimension one. So uh, the support of this delta function is a smooth 
oriented hypersurface in, in Rn. Uh, again, I will choose initial conditions in the same form. And first of all, I will suppose that S0 is, is real. And then I will speak about the, the complex uh, uh, And again, I will suppose that the function phi0 is compactly supported. And due to, to, to this condition, uh, all the asymptotics of, of this Cauchy problem uh, will be concentrated in some compact set uh, up to small corrections. Uh, in some compact set in Rn, so I can suppose that we have some ball just in Rn, and this surface M divides this ball into different parts, uh, and negative part and positive part. Okay. Then, uh, first of all, we have to to to, to define uh, correctly this this uh, additional term delta potential, and this defined in in a in a standard way, very well known. Uh, we have to put some boundary conditions on the surface M, so. Uh, it means that we consider this equation uh, in the positive part uh, of, of our ball, which is divided by the surface M, and in the negative part without any delta function. And on the surface M, we put boundary conditions, which uh, which state that the function U itself must be must be continuous, and the derivative, the normal derivative of this function, M the smallest, the, the, the unit normal to the surface M, the capital, uh, uh, is discontinuous, has a jump, and this jump is proportional to this function Q, which is written down here and to the function u on, on this. Uh, of course these conditions follow from the from the uh, uh, from the condition that this operator must be self adjoint so the, we have to 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 uh, to restrict uh, this operator without any delta function on the functions which vanish on the surface and then take the the self adjoint extension all the self adjoint extensions now, uh, how to co construct the, the corresponding geometrical objects in this case? So first of all, we have to, to consider the extended phase space. Uh, instead of space R to N, we have to consider the space R to N plus 2. Uh, we have to add the time T and the, uh, the conjugated variable T naught here. And in this extended phase space, we have to consider isotropic surface initial, which is, which is uh, defined by the initial conditions. T is equal to zero. P's are the derivatives of S0. Uh, and uh, the classical Hamiltonian, which is written down here now, uh, vanishes from this one. Then we shift this isotropic surface uh, along the trajectories of the Hamiltonian system with this Hamiltonian. And we take the union on, of all these shifts. Again, I skipped here some technical some technical conditions which uh, guarantee the, that uh, this manifold is a good manifold in, in uh, good Lagrangian manifold, good Lagrangian manifold in R2 and R2. Now we have to do the following. We, so th th this Lagrangian manifold uh, defines uh, the asymptotic solution of this Cauchy problem if we neglect delta function. In order to take into account the delta function, we have to to consider together with this Lagrangian manifold some another Lagrangian manifold which, it, uh, which uh, describes the reflection of waves in the points of the support of the delta function. So how to do this? It is done in, in a quite natural way. So first of all, we have to, uh, to lift uh, uh, our... So M is the support of the delta function. We have to lift this uh, surface to the extended phase space. Or all, all another... Uh, all other coordinates are, are arbitrary, and the uh, coordinate axis uh, vary on this surface here. Okay? And then we have to intersect this, this, this lifted surface with this Lagrangian manifold lambda plus. This is uh, the manifold N plus. Again, I, uh, I suppose that this, this manifold is a good manifold. Uh, namely, uh, I have to suppose that this, this intersection is a smooth connected manifold in order to everything to be. To, to be. Okay? And then. Uh, and then uh, I define uh, the map of this manifold, which is, uh, which is just uh, the rule of geometrical objects. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the rule of geometrical optics. It is the, the change of the sign of the, normal, of the normal component of the momentum. So here, formal definition is written. So we, have, uh, we, we consider for each point of our, um, of our surface M, which is the support of the delta function. We, we have to consider the, the tangent and the normal components of the, of the momentum, okay? And we have to, to define this map, which, uh, 
which uh, simply changes the, the sign of the normal of the normal component. And then we apply this map to the to this to this to the surface n. The surface n uh, comes from the from the uh, from the support of the delta function. And uh, we we have we obtain the surface n minus and then shift the surface along the trajectories of the classical Hamiltonian system. So uh, then we have two Lagrangian manifolds in R2 n plus 2. This is the, the main geometrical object in this case. Then we have to construct the volume form, the volume form on this lambda minus. Uh, first of all, we construct the, the volume form on lambda plus. The way of construction is quite natural. We consider the form the x, and then uh, uh, shift this form along the trajectories of the Hamiltonian system and multiply by ds. S is here the time along the trajectories. Yes, we have the, the physical time, which is the time in our equation, and S is the time along the classical trajectory. Then on the surface n plus, we substitute to this form the normal component on the velocity, or oh, I'm sorry, of the momentum, uh, map this form to the surface n minus, and again uh, construct the invariant form by, by, by this same form. So after this construction, we have a pair of Lagrangian surfaces, lambda plus and lambda minus, sigma plus and sigma minus. And uh, the theorem is that uh, uh, the asymptotic solution of the, of the Schrodinger equation with delta potential can be written down in the following form. Uh, so on the negative side of the surface M is the sum of two summons. Uh, one summon corresponds to the initial Lagrangian surface lambda plus. It de defines the wave which comes to the surface of, uh, of, of the support of the delta function. And another one, uh, another one defines the reflected, the reflected wave. And on the negative side, uh, side we have only, only the, the summon. I'm sorry, here is a mistake here. Of course, we have to, to, to put here lambda plus. This is the, the wave which comes to the, to comes to the surface and goes further. Uh, the functions phi again can be can be computed by explicit formulas, and here uh, 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 these formulas they define the the rules of uh, reflection and transmission in the points of our surface M. Here, p n is the normal component of the momentum, and q, which is here in our equation, and it is coefficient before the delta. Theorem is that the series is a synthetic series for the solution of the Cauchy problem for any for any finite interval of, of time. Okay. So this this uh, coefficients which are written down here uh, are analogous of the coefficients of transmission and reflection for this case. Uh, now uh, uh, I will say a few words without a, a few words without any details about the situation when this uh, function as not as not is 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 complex value in this case instead of, instead of uh, lagrangian surfaces we have to consider complex vector bundles over isotropic surface. and again we have to 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 fix some some rules of reflection of this vector bundle so the rules of reflections are more or less the same so we have a, a, a complex vector bundle over isotropic surface the surface itself Reflect, is reflected by the same rule. We, we have to simply to, to change the, the sign of the normal component of the momentum. And as for the fibers of this bundle, the fibers of this bundle are Lagrangian planes, so it is just the same that quadratic forms. Uh, and uh, if we have to reflect uh, 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 this quadratic form, we have to shift it by the second fundamental form of the, of the, of the surface M. It is written down here. Uh, and now I will speak about second example. The second example is the uh, wave equation. Uh, and I suppose that the velocity in this wave equation singularly depends on the small parameter epsilon. So it, is, uh, it, is, it depends on such variable phi of x divided by epsilon, where phi is a smooth function, scalar valued function, uh, and uh, I will suppose that uh, the equation phi equals to zero defines a smooth regular hypersurface in, in n-dimensional space. Uh, 
on. Uh, about this function t, the t, which is the velocity in, in this wave equation, I will suppose that this function as the function of n plus one variables is completely smooth, strictly positive, and I will suppose that it tends to, to limits as, as uh, the, this fast variable y tends to plus or minus infinity, and uh, it tends to limit faster with all derivatives faster than any power of all this y. So uh, it means that uh, this velocity has a jump, uh, a, a rapid jump near this hypersurface m. So the, the picture is something like that. So we have some, some smooth, some very regular function t minus, another regular function t plus, in, in, and then the point of some surface will have a jump. The function itself is, is smooth, but if we consider the weak limit of this function as epsilon tends to zero, it will be discontinuous. Uh, for example, we can consider uh, the case when uh, this, uh, uh, this function t plus and t minus coincide, then, uh, then uh, we have something like delta function. If we divide this function by epsilon and take the, the weak limit, we will have a delta. And again, we consider for this, for this uh, equation some short wave, short wave initial conditions. And again, the, the, the question is how this uh, short wave initial condition evolves in time, what geometrical objects we have to, 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 to construct in order to, to compute the asymptotics of this question. Here uh, is just one remark. Uh, if we consider such coefficients with rapidly varying, uh, such equations with rapidly varying coefficients, then the standard way to deal with such equations is to consider the fast variable, which is here y, phi divided by epsilon. And then we have to replace the Laplacian by this differential operator. And if we consider the so-called epsilon symbol, it means that epsilon uh, derivatives, which are multiplied by epsilon, we have to replace by some new variable e. Then from this operator, we have uh, the symbol of this operator is again an operator in this fast variable y. And it is very well known how to deal with such situations if the spectrum of this operator uh, is, is, is uh, discrete. In this case, we have to, to, to replace the classical Hamiltonians, which uh, are just the symbols of initial operator, by the eigenvalues of this operator, which is the symbol, the epsilon symbol of this operator. Uh, but in our case, the, the, the spectrum of this operator is continuous, so we, we can't apply this. this, this. Ah, so first of all, I will uh, show the very simple formulas which, uh, which uh, uh, correspond to one-dimensional case. So let's suppose that uh, this equation, wave equation is one-dimensional. So x is point of the real line, uh, and uh, the function phi is just a linear function. Okay. Ah. First of all, I, I will remind the, the very well-known formulas when we have no rapid, uh, no rapid uh, singular dependence on, on epsilon and coefficients. If the, the velocity doesn't depend on epsilon, it is the function t minus, then it is very well known. This formula can be, of course, found in some textbook. Then the asymptotic solution has this form. We have two waves. One of wave propagates to the right, and another one propagates to the left. Uh, and uh, the waves uh, are, are described by this WKB function. Uh, and uh, the functions phi and the functions s can be computed absolutely explicitly. Here are written down, here are the formulas for the, for the so functions s and phi naught are, are written down explicitly. Okay. Uh, uh, it means uh, geometrically that this, these waves propagate just uh, with classical velocity minus to the right and to the left, nothing more. Okay. It, it, this formula just states that, that we have the propagation with the, the velocity. Uh, if we consider the, the function which depends on epsilon, then for small times the situation will be the same. Yes, yes of course, I, I have forgotten to say that if, when we consider this Cauchy problem, I suppose that uh, the support of the function phi naught doesn't intersect the surface M. So we have some surface on, on which we have a, a jump of the velocity, and we have the initial condition which is uh, situated in some other place of n-dimensional space, and then the wave packet comes to this surface. 
In one dimensional case, it means that the support of the initial condition doesn't contain this point. For uh, rather small times, namely for, for times of this, which, which uh, satisfy this inequality, uh, the, the solution will be just the same. That the wave doesn't reach the, the, the point X naught. But when the wave reaches this point, we have to consider reflected and transmitted waves. Uh, this reflected and transmitted waves uh, are uh, governed by some additional differential equation of the second order. This differential equation is written down here. So we have to consider this ordinary differential equation of the second order. The function V, the capital, is constructed by using, by using the, the, the initial uh, coefficient in the wave equation, C and the limit, C minus, C minus and C plus. And uh, uh, the, the function V uh, tends to limit as Y tends to plus or minus infinity, and these limits are positive. It means that for this equation, we have an, uh, a unique solution with, with asymptotics of this type, at plus infinity, at minus infinity. It's just uh, the analog of, of, of standard Yost function for this case. Okay. So let's consider this equation. Let's consider those coefficients, the coefficient on reflection and coefficient on of transition. Then theorem states that uh, uh, on any finite clause interval of time, the solution of the Cauchy problem can be represented uh, as the following asymptotic series. Here we have different summons. The first summon uh, defines the wave which comes in the direction, in such direction that this wave doesn't come to the to the support of the singularity. And these three summons they define the wave which comes to the uh, to the support of the singularity. Uh, F plus defines the wave which uh, comes further uh, and uh, which is uh, transmitted, and uh, as the 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 the, the, uh, the the functions with the sign minus define the wave which is which is reflected. And all these functions can be can be computed explicitly. Here, the formulas are written. The, the formulas are rather cumbersome, but but completely. So this is formula for the leading part of it. Com completely. Uh, and now I will consider the, the multidimensional case. In multidimensional case, we have two new effects. The first effect is the, the presence of the focal point. In a rapid, rapid, uh, uh, rapid uh, dependence of the velocity on, on epsilon, even in this case, the solution doesn't have this type. It, it, in order to construct solution, we have to consider uh, Lagrangian surfaces. We have to consider geometrical. Another effect is the very well-known effect of total reflection. Uh, if we have, uh, if we have uh, uh, multidimensional wave equation, and for example, if we consider this equation in the media, uh, which is divided by, by, by a surface into two, into two uh, uh, parts, then uh, under some conditions we can have total reflection. There, there is no transmitted wave on the re reflected one. This picture illustrates the situation. If we lie uh, in the water and look outside to the air, then if the angle of, of, of our uh, eye is, uh, is uh, not very orthogonal to the surface, then we, we, we don't see anything outside. Uh, everything which we see we, it, it, it is situated uh, actually inside the water, but we look at it, we, we see it just like it's outside. Of course, it's very well known effect that this can, can be found in the textbook. Okay, uh, so uh, now for this case, I have to, to construct, the, the, construct the, the corresponding geometrical law. First of all, I will remind what happens if we have, if we have, uh, we don't have any any singular dependence on epsilon. If our coefficient depends only on x, doesn't depend on epsilon, so it's a completely smooth one. In this case, again, we have to consider extended phase space with coordinates x, t, t, p naught, uh, and we have to consider, first of all, initial isotropic surface, just the same as in the previous example, which is defined by the, by the equations p are the derivatives of the initial function at naught, uh, time is equal to zero, and the classical Hamiltonian, which is here 
now it is it has this 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 word also vanishes uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, we shift uh, we shift uh, the surface along the trajectories of the classical Hamiltonian system again we take the union of all the shifts again and skip the technical conditions on the velocity t uh, which guarantees the, that uh, all this union is a good manifold. Okay. Uh, uh, in our situation this manifold uh, will have two connected components one connected component uh, defines the wave which comes in one direction and another one in, in the opposite direction. And uh, a very well known fact uh, is that uh, in this case uh, again uh, the asymptotic solution is uh, defined by the muscle canonical operator. Of course here this, this sign means not, not, not strict equality but it, it is uh, an asymptotic series, an asymptotic series for the sun. And uh, uh, K here is the muscle of canonical operator on this on this program. Uh, uh, again, if we have to consider the main parts of asymptotic solution, then we just uh, have to shift the initial amplitude along the trajectory. Nothing. Uh, now, what happens if we have this surface on, on uh, near which uh, we have the rapid jump of the position? Then again, we have to we have to define uh, transmitted and reflected Lagrangian surfaces. They are defined more or less in the same way as in the previous example. First of all, we consider the function, uh, the, the surface which is which uh, which comes from the support of the of the singularity of, of C. The singularity is not only singularity, but the singularity of the weak limit of, of, of the velocity. So uh, it is defined by this equation phi equals to zero. Uh, and then we have to intersect to intersect the surface with the Lagrangian surface, which is just defined here, which is the of shifted, shifted initial isotropism. And uh, on this uh, intersection, uh, we have to we have to define two maps. One of this map will define the transmitted wave, and another one will define the reflected wave. So I will consider two different situations. Uh, the first situation is the situation of the presence of, of transmitted wave. It means that this quantity on, on the surface N is strictly positive, uh, divided from zero by some positive constant. And another condition is the condition of total reflection. I will not consider the situation when the, the left-hand side of, of this inequality can change the sign on the surface N. It is much more complicated. So in these two cases, uh, we have to consider transmitted and reflected Lagrangian surface. These surfaces are defined by the following form. So if we consider the first case when we have refraction, so we have uh, transmitted surface and reflected surface, then we have considered two maps. These maps are defined by the following formula. If we have to, if we want to define the the, the reflected surface, then we have only to change the sign of the normal component of the velocity. And if we, uh, we have to define the, the transmitted surface, then we, we uh, replace Pn by Pn plus, which is written down here. Okay. Here uh, we have the expression, which is strictly positive. By, by, by. Uh, then we apply these two maps to the, to the surface N, consider two surfaces two manifolds which correspond to transmitted and reflected waves and then shift these manifolds along the trajectories of the classical Hamiltonian systems obtained invariant manifolds obtain on these manifolds uh, the volume forms just by the same rule as in, in, in the previous case and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this Lagrangian surfaces will define the asymptotic solutions of the, of the Cauchy problem in the second case, the case of total reflection, we, we have to consider only one of the surface because in this case, this, this Pn plus doesn't exist. It, it, it is imaginary. Uh, the, the expression here is, is negative. Only the, the surface which defines the, the reflected surface. Uh, in order to, to, to describe the coefficients of reflection and transmission, again, we have to consider the the, the ordinary differential equation of the second order. This equation has this form, and uh, 
the analog of the potential here is written down here. Uh, this uh, function depends on y and also depends on the on the points of this surface in the phase space, like the like on the parameter. Okay, parametrically depends on on the points of this surface. And again, we have to consider for this equation the coefficients of transmission and reflection. Uh, if we if we do not have total total reflection, then we have a unique solution, which is an, anal an analog of the Yost function and has asymptotics as y tends to plus or minus infinity of this type. And in the second case, when we have total reflection, we will have a solution which, as y tends to minus infinity, oscillates and rapidly decays as y tends to plus infinity. This, uh, this uh, uh, r is the coefficient of reflection here. So the theorem is that uh, uh, for the first case, case if we have, uh, if we do, do not have total reflection, if we have transmitted and, and reflected wave, then asymptotic solution has the form which is written down here. So lambda plus is the manifold which uh, describes the wave which comes to the which comes to the to the surface. Lambda minus is the uh, I'm sorry, it is lambda two. Lambda plus is the transmitted wave, and lambda minus is the reflected. And the functions f, again, are defined by explicit formula. So here, these formula are written down. I, I, they are rather cumbersome, but completely, completely explicit. And in the second case, if we have total reflection, then we, we do not have any transmitted wave. So we have only three manifolds. Uh, lambda 2 defines the wave which comes to the surface of, of the jump of the velocity, and lambda minus defines the reflection. And again, if we... Uh, the last, uh, the last uh, slide again. If we uh, consider uh, initial condition which defines the squeeze state, so which is localized on the some, on the some surface of positive codimension, then uh, instead of Lagrangian surfaces, we have to deal with complex vector bundles, and uh, the bases of this vector bundles are reflected or transmitted by the same rules as Lagrangian surfaces, which was here considered. Uh, and uh, uh, again, if we, if we want to, to describe the, the, the rule of reflections for, for, for the fibers, uh, then we have to consider this complex, complex planes, Lagrangian planes as the quadratic forms, and uh, to shift these quadratic forms by the second fundamental form of the surface. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for questions. Please. Andrei Igrevich, could you kindly explain us uh, when you do use uh, the extended Hamiltonian system and um, uh, when do you use a uh, usual Hamiltonian system? Uh, what is the purpose for using extended Hamiltonian system? Yes, and, it's, uh, very, it, it's, it's a very simple fact. The fact is, is that uh, the uh, the reflection and transmission on the surface, they occur in different times. So we have to consider all times in which we have reflection on the surface. So in, in order to do this, we have to consider the extended phase space and, and extended Hamiltonian system. Not clear, but in the usual case, uh, why do I, I, for the first time, see the extended uh, Hamiltonian system? In usual system? case, we don't have any reflection and transmission. Uh, uh, we have uh, only uh, propagation of wave. Uh, Ah, ah. But if we have, to, if we consider the, the the reflection, then the reflection occurs in different instances of time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Please. A question uh, about uh, initial condition, the initial state. Uh, uh, can you please uh, show the earliest slide uh, having uh, phi node and S node? Uh, you underlined that there are two cases, uh, the real case and the co complex case. Yes. Uh, because, yes. uh, if I understood correctly, in the real case, uh, uh, we have a constant uncertainty for position, uh, but uh, in the uh, quantum to classical limit, uh, the uncertainty of uh, momentum vanishes. Uh, in the complex case? In the real case. 
no, in the real case, the classical momentum is just the derivatives of this space S naught. Uh, I try to understand uh, these uh, conditions in terms of uncertainty. Uh, the po po the uh, factor uh, which determines a position is a uh, phi naught. Yes, the, the, the position is determined by phi naught and the momentum is defined by this space S naught. And this uh, phi naught is a fixed uh, function uh, during uh, your limit transition. And uh, uh, thus, uh, uh, we have uh, some, some fixed uncertainty uh, for uh, no, It is not fixed, it is shifted along the trajectory. Uh, so. I, I mean, your li limit uh, epsilon tends to zero. Ah, for the what initial happens, uh, with, uh, What happens to uncertainties of position of and momentum of this initial? The, the, so, the, the position is defined by this function phi naught, and the momentum is defined by the function S naught. And uh, to, together, the position and momentum based on this Lagrangian set of lambda naught. So, lambda naught is just the, uh, the wave front of, of, of this initial condition. So, it is just this, this lambda naught is just the, the, the classical limit of the initial condition. Sure, but uh, the Lag Lagrangian uh, surface. Uh, uh, is something of uh, classical mechanics, not yes. quantum mechanics. Yes. But I am uh, inter interested in uh, uh, in qu quantum initial states. So what we have to do with this function in order to, to answer your question? Uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to ask uh, what uh, happens in the complex case. Which is the difference in, in terms it, of uncertainty? In, you claim it that the complex case is a Swiss case. Swiss case, yes. Why? Can you explain it better? Because uh, if S naught is complex value, is localized in the small vicinity of the surface of positive codimension. So we uh, so uh, the uncertainty of position diminishes. Diminishes. Yes. In co contrary to the real case uh, where it is constant uh, when uh, epsilon uh, vanishes. In uh, the complex case, it diminishes. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, question, please. One question. Yeah. One question. Uh, do you expect some uh, applications to Riemannian geometry if your singularities correspond to singularities of metric? Sure, sure. And uh, uh, we, we are just uh, studying this situation. Uh, we we started with uh, with certain spectral problems when we have some some metrics with singularities. If we consider the delta functions in the coefficients, it is very close to the situation when we have the singularities of the conic type of metrics. So for, for the singularities of conic types, we, we also have some results. Thanks. We can say thanks to speaker again. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, we have a break uh, till 12.
Yes, I can see your presentation, but we can't hear you. Your microphone is switched off. Добрый, добрый день. Вы меня слышите? Хорошо, да, теперь слышим, видим, все отлично. Все работает, да? Ну хорошо. Я, собственно говоря, хотел проверить до начала лекции, чтобы не было технических сбоев. Это правильно. Ну хорошо, тогда ждем начала.
Thank you. Ага, вижу вашу презентацию. Uh, dear colleagues, let's continue our morning session. And uh, the next talk is uh, by Alexander Vasilich Mikhailov. He will speak about uh, quantization of free associative dynamical systems. You're welcome. Right. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to this prestigious conference, which I consider is one of the you know, the best conference and, uh, in Russia. And uh, I, I've been in person in some of these conferences. Now, unfortunately, I, I cannot make it and uh, do my presentation, my, my talk online. But I, I really consider this a very important event. Uh, today, I want to share with you some non-orthodox view on the problem of quantization and uh, application of this new method, which emerged quite recently, actually, very few papers published, uh, and, uh, uh, and there are some papers in archive and waiting for publication. So it's quite new one, but I, I, I believe it's promising, and I, I found it, that I, I believe that you will find it interesting. And uh, my idea of the talk is that I first I will introduce some things, how I see classical and quantum mechanics, what uh, we, what problems we face when we uh, try to quantize the, the system and some problems not solved up to now. Then I will introduce a new concept which is called free associated mechanics and, uh, and formulate and give my definition of quantization and illustrate this, defini this, quanti this definition and this approach using the, the well-known total systems or quantization of alter hierarchy and if time permits I will discuss something about uh, quantization of the stationary Hedoni equations. Uh, I don't need much from the classical and quantum mechanics. What, uh, what, 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 what we have, in, uh, instead of phase space, we will be talking about, uh, about algebra of functions on the phase space, because this object is easier to generalize to uh, the quantum setting, where, is it, where we don't have a phase space, but we still have algebra. So we have uh, algebra, for in, I, I take a very simple, the most simple case one can imagine. So we have Newton equation. Newton equation that uh, back going to 17th century, uh, and uh, we have algebra of functions of P and Q. P and Q just commutative real valued functions of time, and they satisfy a system of equation where, uh, well, I don't put mass here, so uh, the, the velocity is P and the acceleration is force, and the, it, this equation has a first integral. First integral is a quantity which does not change in time uh, if we differentiate using the equation. And later on in 
19th century, 1833, something like that, uh, this equation has been re recasted in the, in, the, in the Hamilton form by, by Sir William Rowling Hamilton. Uh, he introduced, uh, the, the, he used Poisson brackets, QP equal one, a standard Poisson structure, uh, and, uh, and uh, on, on our uh, algebra of functions. And uh, then we can rewrite equation in the, uh, in, in, in the Hamiltonian form, and any function in our, in our space we can differentiate using Poisson brackets with H, which H is called Hamiltonian of the system. So that's what I see uh, about how we have set up in the, in the classical mechanics. In uh, 1925, uh, uh, basically, well, the, the, the necessity to, to introduce quantum mechanics uh, already was on the edge between 19 and, uh, and 20 century, uh, because the experimental data cannot be explained using just standard classical mechanics. And uh, there are lots of people was working there, but I want to uh, uh, to um, to talk about uh, Heisenberg. And Heisenberg noticed that they, it's not the fault of equation. Equation could be to save the situation, to explain the the experimental data. He can use the same equation of motion, but the room of operations with variables should be different. And he said that, oh, variables P and Q should not be commutative, but, uh, but the commutator is, is, uh, is exactly the Planck uh, constant divided by 2 pi and i here. So uh, uh, that uh, immediately, and, and he noticed that if he use these rules, then the Hamiltonian which is the same, but functions, uh, but P and Q now not commute and uh, uh, satisfy this commutation relation, still is the first integral in this uh, operator <laughs> sense, I would say. Uh, so instead of uh, set of uh, instead of algebra of functions, basically we consider now the uh, algebra of uh, generated by variables P and Q associative algebra with uh, coefficients, rational coefficients in H, and quotient over the commutation relation, or the, the ideal, to say it ideal generated by commutation relation. That, and uh, in the same year, 25, uh, uh, that uh, th this thing was discussed by, by, by Dirac, who, who get the, the proof of the paper of Heisenberg even before publication, and, and those uh, things develop so quick. He noticed, for instance, that in uh, the uh, limit of h goes to zero, that uh, the, the commutators goes to i h multiplied by Poisson brackets. And, uh, and uh, the equation can be written in the Heisenberg form, how we call it Heisenberg form. So instead of Poisson bracket, we have i divided by h commutator of h and q, commutator of h and p, and for any element of our algebra, which you know, uh, which we can differentiate with respect to our system. This system we can write it in the Heisenberg form. We just derivative is nothing but i divided by h, uh, uh, by Planck constant commutator h with, with a. Uh, what actually happened? We replace the real valued functions p, q, uh, h, and any other uh, thing which we can measure in in in. in uh, the classical mechanics by Hermitian operators, P and Q and H. And uh, if uh, to solve the problem in, in the classical, sometimes it's a very difficult problem because what uh, we, we just formulated, but to solve it, we need to find P and Q as a function of T. And even if our force is quadratic or cubic, that solution will be expressed in elliptic functions. Here, uh, we need, uh, in quantum mechanics, we need to develop the theory of representation of these Hermitian operators in the Hilbert space, and uh, they go to quasi-classic, for instance, or you know, find solutions for these operators, which is not as simpler than in a, in a classical uh, uh, mechanics. But I don't want to go to that level. I just want to first to discuss the problem between classical and quantum mechanics on above a simple level, and the next step we will uh, look. Uh, probably later on in future. 
uh, actually the observation of Dirac that the commutator of uh, of 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 variables of uh, of our observables in, uh, uh, in 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 quantum mechanics, if h goes to zero, goes to i h uh, on bracket in the system, plus some corrections, uh, was the beginning of so-called deformation quantization, and there were plenty of work on this deformation and quantization, and we know even the uh, some. Fields medalist uh, uh, that uh, if you have arbitrary Poisson structure on our manifold that can be deformed uh, to to non commutative multiplication in in as a form of series in H and uh, the the things which you need to do is the, the delicate things is is not just to have a, the first term but the consistency is, 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 is guaranteed in the first term in H, but the consistent uh, should be, uh, associativity should be in every power of H, and that is a very de de delicate and difficult problem to prove. That is one thing, and that uh, exactly the, uh, the issue raised by Dirac in the paper 19, 1925, he said that, right, uh, he said that the consistency is guaranteed for uh, for small h uh, in the limit, but is do we have consistency of our commutation relations with the dynamical systems and with the, all their consequences, its consequences with a finite h? And uh, if in the case of Heisenberg quantization it's easy to prove, in the general case uh, of uh, uh, deformation quantization, you need to talk about cons uh, to, to convergence in H, which I think have not been uh, have not been done. So uh, you we we need the, the consistency because in in in, in quantum mechanics in experimentals we have that the Planck constant is a finite number, so it should be convergence, and that I, I think is one of the issues in deformation quantization. Another issue. Uh, is ordering. Ordering of operators, well, in, if Hamiltonian is so simple as we had in, in this dynamical system with nothing to order, but in, in principle, in, in equation or in all observables, Hamiltonians or whatever we measure, uh, we can, in commutative case, it does not matter how we put P and Q. In, uh, in quantum mechanics, because they don't commute, uh, we need to take care about this, and there are several order, uh, orderings like uh, Bale orderings, normal orderings, so there are s several concepts of orderings, and there is no any canonical way to, to do it up to now. In the recent lectures of Winton, last year he gave two courses of lectures, and he uh, he focused on these problems and, sa and said there is no any canonical solution to this problem. There are two other issues which I want to also discuss uh, today is uh, multi-Hamiltonian structure. Well, if a system is uh, just coming from, uh, uh, originate from mechanics, we, we, we know what is P, what is Q, but uh, there are plenty of Hamiltonian structures. Some systems uh, uh, admit two or three simultaneously on the same variables, two or three uh, Hamiltonian structure, two or three Poisson brackets, and can be written as a Hamiltonian systems, and I will give examples of these systems. Which one to take for quantization? Which one to deform? And what happens if we have a linear combination of this uh, Hamiltonian structure, which is also Hamiltonian structure? So how it can be reflected in, on the quantum level? And uh, the last uh, question is, can we define and non-deformation quantization. How to define it? Because deformation starts from Poisson brackets. Maybe Poisson brackets, maybe there are some systems which don't uh, uh, admit Poisson brackets, but still uh, have the same features as quantum uh, systems, the same Heisenberg equations, uh, everything looks the same, the only luck is a, is a uh, uh, limit to classical systems. We have, uh, we actually, we had some systems like that, like supersymmetric systems or systems on Grassmann algebra, and there is a quantum analog of these systems, but then people introduce Poisson brackets on, uh, on, on, on this uh, 
uh, structures on uh, on superstructures, and then uh, you can consider that as a deformation of superstructure. But uh, is it the only structure we can deform? Maybe there are some other structures. So that issues I want to address in my talk. Right. Uh, to go forward, I need to introduce uh, an, an intermediate, uh, maybe technical steps, but maybe not so technical. I want to introduce free associative mechanics. This concept is the following. In classical mechanics, uh, everything commute. In quantum mechanics, we have commutation relation. It's like what we uh, are in the Heisenberg commutation relation. Now, let us assume that our variables, P, Q, whatever, uh, are elements of free associative algebra. Uh, I will consider everything over C uh, for simplicity. And uh, then we can still define dynamics of the system. What is the dynamics? It's a derivation of the free associative algebra. So we have free associative algebra generated by, in this case, by two letters, P and Q. And uh, uh, derivation is nothing but a, a linear map satisfying the Leibniz rule, the standard Leibniz rule, that, that's only I get from the derivation. So that defined by linearity uh, uh, the derivation on the whole algebra. And we can, for instance, say that derivatives of Q is P and derivatives of P is polynomial of Q. And that is a dynamical system where P and Q have no rules to, uh, to change. Well, if you don't like uh, free algebras, you can think that P and Q are matrices n by n, where n not fixed, or n is even inf uh, infinite. So you don't know how to swap the, the, the matrices, how to change the order. Uh, well, if you fix n, of course, it's not a free algebra. There is Hamilton-Kelly theorem, for example. But if you don't fix n, that looks like a free algebra. So you can think that it's equation or matrix equation or equation of free algebra. Uh, I believe that this equation will have some meaning in future series, may, some maybe probabilistic, etc., but I, I, I don't want to speculate in, in, in this direction at the moment. What properties this equation have? Do they have anything in common with the standard classical mechanics, for instance? Uh, what about existence of first integrals? Well, the commutator QP is a first integral in this, for, for this equation. Indeed, if you differentiate this commutator, you just differentiate term by term, use the Leibniz rule and linearity. You just differentiate like that, and then you replace, uh, uh, you replace, uh, you replace Q dot by P, Q dot, P, P dot by, by F, at, uh, F of P, P dot by F of P, and Q dot by P. You replace it, and you get zero. So that is the first integral. But the standard conventional Hamiltonian uh, function or first integral of, in a classical sense will not be first integral anymore, uh, or constant of motion, if, if, uh, if F is not a linear function. And that's what you example, that if you take f, for instance, a quadratic function, so u is a cubic, and you just differentiate blindly uh, h in, in t, so dot I put for derivative in t for, for shortness, and substitute again in the same way, you will see that result is not zero, but uh, we can be expressed as sum of two commutators. So the result belongs to the span of commutator of algebra itself. Actually, uh, long ago, well, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, with Valery Sokolov, we, we published a paper where we tried to develop a theory of these uh, uh, ordinary differential equations on associative algebras. And this, uh, and we noticed this thing, and we introduced uh, a quotient space. The, this span is not ideal in the algebra, it's a linear space. And we, de we define a quotient space of our free algebra over these commutators, and then we say that h is a first integral uh, of our equation, it belongs to this quotient space, and such that if you differentiate in time, uh, the result is in the commutator. Uh, basically, physicists would say, or people working with matrices, they would say that let's introduce trace, and trace 
this exactly this this uh, this space span of commutator is 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 in the in the kernel of trace. So we'll kill to, to zero because in trace we can swap uh, variables cyclically. So in this case uh, we can if we define first integrals like that, then this dynamical system we start with this one has infinitely many first integrals which are independent, for instance, algebraically independent. For instance, H1, we have first integral H, H1, H2, and we can construct infinitely many of those. And they are all first integrals if we uh, consider as elements of, of this fact motion space. Uh, the Newton uh, equation, this Newton equation we start with, has infinitely many symmetries, and this symmetry is actually is a. We can introduce here also the Poisson structure, non, non commutative on, on free algebra, that was done in our paper with Sakalov in 2000, uh, in year 2000 communications, and later on, you know, people start to develop this theory and the Vandenberg in 2004. With, uh, Crowley Bowie 2005, etc. But the first paper was, was ours. And you can find symmetries of this equation as an equation, uh, as a Hamiltonian equation with these Hamiltonians. And there are infinitely many symmetries. And symmetries are just compatible flows. So if you differentiate PQ with respect to our dynamical system, with, with respect to derivation T, and then by T5, and in opposite way, the result will be the same. It's exactly the same concept of symmetry. So there is some common things with the classical equations. What the major difference between classical and quantum and uh, 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 classical quantum and free algebra? The major difference is in the structure of the algebra. In the free algebra, we have an additive basis of monomials. So any, uh, any, any element of algebra is a sum of monomials with complex coefficients. And any monomials is a word written in, in alphabet PQ. So we can say some number, G, I1 number of P, J1 number of Qs, etc., etc. So arbitrary words, we write a finite number of P and Q in arbitrary order. This J can be zero, non-zero, uh, and, you know, it's just... Uh, uh, any words. And if you fix the monomials of degree n, where well, sum of all these degrees, there will be two power n different monomials. So this algebra grows a lot and is quite far from the commutative. In, the, uh, in contrast, uh, the commutative algebra can be seen as a quotient of our free algebra over all of the commutator P and Q. So P and Q uh, over the ideal generated by the commutator of P and Q. And quantum algebra is a free algebra uh, quotient over to sided ideal generated by P and Q uh, of, of the Heisenberg commutation relation. And in both cases, we can put P in front and Q behind in the function algebra. We just can use our relations. In, in commutative case, it costs nothing. We just swap letters. In quantum, it costs something because we need to add uh, terms of lower degree, but the basis is the same. And basis is the same, and the same for commutative case, like in polynomial algebra, the same in quantum case, and it grows like n plus 1 for fixed degree n. And there is a concept uh, which physicists use a lot uh, of normal ordering. So if you have any expression, you can bring it to our basis, well, if you choose this ordering P in front of Q, and call it normal ordering. Then we can swap P and Q. Uh, for instance, if you swap here P and Q, you will get 2IH Q. And you, if you swap here P and Q, you need to swap it twice but, uh, using commutation relation. You have this expression. Now, and that is the same thing in the algebra. That's because they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quotient algebra, so they belong to the same coset. Uh, so if you use this relation, and substitute it, for instance, in our first integral here, first integral here, you will get zero. So in quantum case, it's zero. <coughs> now, I, I am uh, in, the, in the main slide where I define the, the 
quantization, this non-orthodox definition of quantization. Uh, I begin with a fact, mathematical fact, that any algebra, any associative algebra, can be realized, or you can see that, is isomorphic to uh, a, quotient, a, a quotient of a free algebra or a, an appropriate two-sided ideal. So, basically, yeah, th that's it. So, uh, and that means that the, uh, the quantum algebra, the commutative algebra, every associative algebra can be realized in this way. And therefore, our focus moved from algebra to, to the ideal. We start from the associative algebra, now we focus on the ideal. And my definition of, uh, of, uh, of, in, uh, of quantization, you may accept it or not, but that uh, is the following. That uh, I understand problem of quantization of a given dynamical system. So I don't start from, from, from the Poisson structure or the Poisson manifold, etc. No, I start from a dynamical system. I quantize a given dynamical system. So I have a given dynamical system on a free algebra. So that means I have a derivation on free algebra. So the problem of quantization is to find, uh, to find a two-sided ideal, J, satisfying two properties. The first property, the ideal should be stable with respect to our derivation. So that means if you differentiate ideal, you again, uh, uh, the result again belongs to the ideal. And uh, then this dt, uh, this derivation, induces a derivation of the quotient algebra, if and only if. And the second uh, comes from kind of physical requirement that I want to be very close to the commutative case, to the case of standard quantum mechanics, that the quotient algebra uh, has additive basis of normally ordered monomials. That means that we can swap, if we have some generators in this algebra, we can swap any two generators of this algebra and we have a, a, a basis of monomials where the generators are all ordered like lexicographic order, for instance. Uh, if ideal satisfies these two conditions, I would call it quantization ideal, and that, that is a quantum algebra. Well, there is, of course, I kind of replace problem one problem two by another, because usually people start from commutative case, and I just jump to free algebra and try to, commu uh, to uh, quantize uh, free algebra systems. I accept that is not the same problem. And there are infinitely many ways to go from a commutative, algebra, commutative equations on commutative algebra to equations to uh, on free uh, algebra. And this step is lifting of system to free algebra is delicate. Is delicate. The, uh, here, I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you, uh, so this, uh, yeah, this step is delicate, and uh, but there is a very good uh, guidance to this step. One is that uh, if we uh, usually in our dynamical systems which we study, commutative, we have some properties like symmetries. Which the properties we cherish, we want to keep. We we, can't, we want to keep in the quantum world as well. For instance, some symmetries, some. Uh, discrete symmetries, continuous symmetries, or integrability is also uh, uh, can be expressed in terms of symmetries. So the integrability means we have infinitely many commuting symmetries, and we want to keep this property in the quantum case. So, and we can try to lift our uh, our dynamical system from commutative to free algebra, preserving these properties which we cherish. And if we manage to do that, then the quantum system will also have these properties. Uh, so, uh, now we arrive to a mathematical problem which is not solved, I understand, as I understand, but a very important problem to give some characterization, description, or better classification of all associative algebra with n generators which admit poincare berghoff basis. poincare berghoff basis is exactly, by definition, 
pattern is the basis of normally ordered monomials. And there is a special case, useful case, when the problem was solved. It's not the, the complete solution of the problem, but the special case, very useful case, because many, many examples fit this case. And the, all examples I discussed today will fit this particular case. That the case is the following. We have a free associative algebra of n element. Then the basis in this is just all words in all orders written in this alphabet made from n letters. That is the basis. Now, in this algebra, uh, so this algebra we equip, let this algebra be equipped with a monomial ordering. Monomial ordering. So one monomial is bigger than another. Uh, 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 and uh, there is a smallest monomial, etc. So I will not go in details here. And then uh, we can consider a, a set of polynomials of this form that if we swap x, i, and x, j, where i, I and j are any elements in, uh, uh, in our generators, any from 1 to, to, to n, we have n generators, so i, j uh, s s go from 1 to n, and we swap these two, so we can swap any two, the result will be multiplication by a constant omega, which we don't know, but uh, not zero, and plus some polynomial such that the leading monomial of this polynomial has, uh, in, in our ordering, is smaller than, 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 than what we swap. So that is smaller than what we swap. Then, under some technical condition, this, it is proven that this algebra portion over this, uh, so this uh, ideal would enable us to swap any two elements in the algebra, and quotient, in the quotient algebra uh, there is a basis of normally ordered monomials. So normally ordered, that means the first letter with the highest i is in front, then uh, lower, 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 uh, until maybe one. But uh, that is uh, all possible words, ordered words. And that is uh, exactly the definition of Planck Rader work with basis. And this theory was proven by Lewandowski in his, that there is a Viktor Lewandowski, Ukrainian mathematician working in Kaiserslautern. Uh, in his dissertation in 2005, excellent dissertation, and about this condition. It's not really essential, well, for Poincaré, the work with is essential, but if this condition is not satisfied, is not satisfied, then uh, the basis will be a subset of, of this one. So it will be a normally ordered, but not a complete the work with. Some, some, uh, some uh, monomials will be missed. For instance, if you consider uh, algebra of exter external algebra or Grassmann algebra, where all everything, all uh, xi anti-commute, then uh, the basis does not contain any powers of, of x, because xi squared is equal to zero, but, uh, and that will be subset here. And that, the, that, that is an example of the algebra, for instance, when, uh, when, when we don't have the poincare bergoff with basis. So they are still good. Not every algebra can be, uh, with Poincaré-Bergoff with uh, basis, can be realized as a quotient over this ideal. For instance, famous Sklarian quadratic algebra uh, is not of that type because there is no such monomial ordering which uh, enable us to organize uh, the uh, polynomials in our ide ideal in, in the way, uh, in, in this way. Right. Now, now I want to illustrate how it works. It, it really works. It's just, uh, you think it's, so we, our ideal has lots of, lots of constants like omega j or constant on these polynomials. So we have lots of, lots of uh, unso uh, unknown things. The only thing we guarantee with this ideal that we have a correct basis of normally ordered monomials. Now we need to, uh, to check what happens if if, uh, if uh, uh, the, the, this ideal should be invariant with respect to dynamics. So we need some dynamics. And as examples, I, I choose three examples, but uh, I don't know how much I can do today. One example is very famous. It's so to called total lattice. Total lattice can be infinite. It's a sequence of equations. In, in, in classical cases, x, k is a k from 
uh, either any integer or maybe case periodic, so we have only finite number of values periodically. So that is a so-called total lattice. Total lattice, uh, the integrability of total lattice, uh, total lattice, this, um, the integrability was discovered by by Monakoff and Plaschka in, in, I think, 73-74. That was a thesis, a candidate thesis, PhD thesis of Sergei Monakoff, included in his PhD thesis. And Plaschka proposed, so this is known integrable system. A system of oscillators, which is integrable, so you can consider as oscillators. If x is small, you can uh, expand it in the power of x. You will have linear oscillator plus quadratic, cubic, etc. Uh, corrections and uh, uh, Flashka uh, proposed variables called Flashka variables B and A because exponential is not for good for algebra but polynomial is much better and in this case this system can be written in polynomial form so that is exactly the same system this is exactly the same system as here but in polynomial form and what is known about this system? This system is integrable. It has infinitely many. First, integral. If, if k is in z, we have infinitely many. If k is zn, we have finitely many. So, first integrals. First integrals is uh, uh, things which goes to zero if you differentiate in time. So, we have h1, h2, h3, infinitely many first integrals. Moreover, it is known that this system is multi-Hamiltonian. Actually, it is three Hamiltonian, but I will be talking about two Hamiltonian structure today. So, what does it mean? It means that we can uh, define two types of Poisson brackets in the same variables. Poisson brackets means skew symmetric and uh, satisfying Jacobi identity and Leibniz rule. That that is a, a definition of Poisson bracket. Uh, one Poisson bracket is one here. And the other letters commute, I mean Poisson commute. So if you take any A, any B, they Poisson commute, or A and B, which uh, the difference between K and K1 uh, is more than one, they Poisson commute. And that is one Poisson structure. And for this Poisson structure, H1, the first integral, is a Casimir element. So it commutes with any element of our Poisson algebra. And there is another Poisson structure second Poisson structure. Here I uh, put, uh, write only non-zero non Poisson brackets, all other Poisson brackets zero. Second Poisson structure. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, you can write the same equation, the same flash equation, this equation Bt, uh, difference of A, A, T, this, this equation, you can write in the following way. You can take second Poisson structure and use H1. And you would get these equations. Or you can take first Poisson structure and take H2. And you get exactly the same equation. That is why we have bi Hamiltonian structure. We have two Hamilton two, two Poisson brackets on the same variables, and we have we can write equation as a Poisson, as a Hamilton equation in two different ways. It's a bi Hamiltonian structure. Moreover, we can take H2 with this with the second bracket. And then we will get a symmetry of equation. And then we can do H3 with the first bracket, uh, and we get the same symmetry, etc., etc. And that is a, a way to construct, actually, there is, we can construct recursion operators. There, there is a big theory b behind that. Moreover, these two Poisson structures are compatible in the sense that we can form a Poisson pencil. We can add two Poisson brackets with arbitrary coefficients, lambda and mu. They are, of course, skew symmetric, because each of them is skew symmetric. But moreover, they satisfy the Jacobi identity. So this lambda mu, the linear combination, is, is, is also a legitimate Poisson bracket. The question, which one to quantize if you're doing uh, the uh, deformation quantization? Whether the result will be the same? How to do that? How to approach to this problem? And now, I, what I did, I applied the, the, this idea of the ideal. So I just we write this ideal which, uh, with arbitrary coefficients. And it is, satisfies the property that I can swap any two elements. And then I uh, ask, when 
this ideal is invariant. And there are two, and, and there, is, there is the only solution which, well, I'm able to find, I think I can prove it is the only solution uh, for, uh, for, for infinite uh, chain or for finite chain, but long enough, I mean, longer than, I think, four or five, uh, uh, and equals more than four or five. Uh, then the, the only solution here is the following, that there are the ideal generated by the following commutation relations. That's the only invariant ideal. And this ideal depends on two constants, h and theta. Well, you, I use here i, etc., just in order, because I want to have, to be close to physics, so I want to be in quantum mechanics a and b, be self-joint operators, Hermitian operators, so the ideal should be also uh, respect this property. So these polynomials in these ideals are all skew anti self adjoint. So the quotient algebra will be will have you know good properties of uh, to, to 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 carry this complex structure. Right now, now now what we we we, we see that. Uh, this ideal, uh, th then we can check that after this commutation relation, that if you set this uh, is to zero, that will be commutation relation in the quotient algebra. You can check that this quantum equation, I mean quantum because we have now commutation relations, uh, are uh, equations which have infinitely many first integrals. Real normal first integrals that if you differentiate in time, you get zero. And the first one is the same as before. Here we have some quantum corrections like cosine. If h is zero and theta is zero, this is nothing but a commutative commutator of everything commute. So it corresponds to commutative algebra. If h, if theta is zero, uh, well, here if, if if h is not zero and theta is any, then this h1, h2, h3 are first integrals to our uh, to our equation to our equation, <coughs> to our equation, that means if you differentiate, you will get zero. Well, uh, you, you will get zero. It's the first integral in, in, a, in a true, true sense. Moreover, now we can uh, address the, the question about multi-Hamiltonian and, uh, and by, by Hamiltonian and by quantum structure. Look, we have by Hamiltonian structure. We have Poisson brackets one. If we set h to zero, h to zero in our commutation relations, then everything will commute except these two lines, except these two lines. Everything will h to zero, so a commute, b commute, that commute, and only these two commutation relations have theta, they will not commute. And that, the only two commutation, and look, that is exactly the deformation quantization of the first bracket. Now, we can do the same setting theta to zero. If we set theta to zero, then we, have, we can, uh, can compare the Poisson brackets of the second, uh, second Poisson brackets with a, a quantization which follows from, the, from our ideal with theta equals zero. So we do have two, two different ideals. One uh, leads to quantization of first bracket, another leads to quantization of second bracket, and the uh, uh, ideal, general ideal, give you quantization of Poisson pencil. And indeed, if you just now, you can see that H1 was uh, uh, the Casimir element of the first bracket, as I s said, that with respect to first quantization, H1 is in the kernel, is, is, is a central element of the algebra with respect to theta quantization in this algebra. And uh, uh, Heisenberg equation, we have, plus, uh, we have equation in the uh, Hamilton form, now we have exactly the same Heisenberg equation. Look, with respect to the first commutator, with respect to second, so in a sense we discover a bi-quantum structure of these equations. Now there is a, a question, very important question, is, well, uh, this uh, total lattice uh, correspond to A, B, C, D, uh, A, 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 uh, A, N, 1, um, the algebra. What about A and 2, B, B, C, D, etc., the algebras? The question is, is the, the problem is that these algebras not, cannot be lifted. I know I have one minute. Uh, cannot be lifted to 
uh, to, uh, uh, to free algebra. So there will be a fundamental problem in quantization of, 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 of total lattice in, in this algebra. That's what I predict. So some more work is required. And uh, the last thing I want to say is a non-deformation quantization. What is a non-deformation quantization? Let's take a symmetry of the total lattice. So the next flow commuting with total lattice. And set the same question, what ideal is uh, stable with respect to this derivation? And we will find one more answer. And this answer is here. And this is not a, a commutative, not anti-commutative, that has no any classical limit. But we still have Heisenberg equation. We still have quantum mechanics well posed. And that is example of non-deformation quantization. So I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. We have time for questions. No questions. Everything is clear. Let's thank the speaker again. And we will continue in 10 minutes.
So let's continue. Next speaker is Viktor Matvejevich Buchstaber, and the title of the talk is Integrable Polynomial Hamiltonian KDV Novikov Hierarchies and Their Quantization. Thank you very much for organizer of such important conference, because certainly now it is the ninth, ninth conference, international conference, differential function differential equations. And it is certainly very great events in our mathematical life. Today I should like to introduce the problems which you can understood follow the title of my talk and I should like to mention it. This talk has two parts. First, it, uh, it is a new point of view of very well known object as uh, Cartier de Fries equation and Cartier de Fries hierarchy. And the second part application the method of uh, which introduced by Alexander Mikhailov before with my talk to such important object as Cartier de Fries equation. Details of my talk you can find uh, in some Publication. But today I introduce not only result which you can find here, but in the new result which will be published very soon. Let me start from the well known paper Peter Lux in nineteen sixty eight. He showed that if we consider differential operator of third order and commutator from A3 and operator L, which certainly related with the Schrodinger operator, sturm liouville operator, the simplest operator, which certainly important in many, many mathematical problems. And he show, Lux show, this commutator it is not operator. It is operator of multiplication, multiplication by such differential polynomial. After that, using that partial derivative for operator, it is nothing else, is minus ut, he obtained the cartesian de Vries equation in such form. Of course, if we consider u, is the function from x and t, u dot partial derivative for t, u prime for x, we obtain that this partial differential equation equivalent to the equation in the operator's form. So, you see, we have L and we have operator S3. Very soon, we obtain description of all operators which uh, computer this L is operator of multiplication on differential polynomial. Yes, colorally we obtain integrable differential equation, dynamical system, and together they give uh, the KDV rupture, Novikov rupture, etc. So our main problem Describe all differential operator such that commutator with L it is operator multiplication on differential polynomial. To do this, I needed some algebraic notions. But let me remind you: if you consider the textbook surveys related with Cartier de Fries equation, you find the approach on the base of quantum field theory. 
But if you consider the textbook, Arnold's textbook, mathematical methods in classical mechanics, you find description for the de Vries equation this relation with classical mechanical problems. But again, approach to construct this equation in textbook of Arnold follow the approach of quantum field theory. But my goal show that we can construct this object using the method classical mechanics. So, from this point of view, you can consider polynomial algebra as nothing else as ring of polynomial on phase space with coordinates, you know, at u0, u1, and infinite dimensional coordinates, nothing else. It is a phase space. But in this space, we have dynamics D, which is very, very simple. You see, it is shift indices. UK go to UK plus one. But what's important uh, for our approach? We consider this phase space as a grading. It is a very important algebraic notion, grading. From this point of view, we can describe you see, U0 as sum of graded linear space generated by homogeneous polynomial of weight K. So you start from one-dimensional linear space, U0, it is a nothing, O2, one-dimensional, one-dimensional, after the two-dimensional, and so on. But what's important, the operator D, which, let me repeat, describe our dynamics, is monomer, monomorphism, which translate uh, U0K to U0K plus one. It turns out many algebraic problems we can solve using this property as monomorphism. Okay, next. We have canonical dynamics D, and should like to consider evolutionary dynamics. By definition, it is nothing else, derivation of our ring U0, which commute this fixed operator D. Of course, if you should like to obtain a homogeneous evolutionary derivation, it is necessary and sufficient to choose homogeneous polynomial degree k for some k and put dt u0, it, dt u0, it is the, our chosen polynomial. Each evolutionary derivation defines the differential equation for the function which I mentioned. So we obtain many, many differential equations of such form. Okay. But consider differential operator order n. Let me repeat. Coefficient it is a homogeneous polynomial. But condition commuter L A is operator multiplication of polynomial PA. We will call such operators KDV operators. And denote by new n the set of all KDV operators order at most n. Of course, it is a linear space. And if we choose some such operator A and obtain polynomial, we obtain a KDV equation. In special case A3, of course, we obtain uh, classical KDV, but here we have a lot, a lot such differential equation. Of course, uh, the, the equivalent to the equation in the operator's form. Novikov's equation. 
what suggested Sergei Petrovich Novik? He suggests consider what such operator A such that the commuter is operator multiplication on polynomial and introduce ordinary differential equation. Let me repeat, A it is differential operator, but now we obtain ordinary differential equation. We will call such equation A stationary or Novikov A equation. In 1974, Novikov showed that with this equation, let me repeat, ordinary differential equation, define a rich family periodic and quasi-periodic potential U for the Schrodinger, Schrodinger equation. You see? In the class of abelian function of the Jacobian of hyperliptic curve. More, the construction of such potential gives a method for explicitly constructed eigenfunction of Schrodinger equation in the form of baker heather Schrodinger function of this curve. It is exactly why it was important to consider such special case as Novikov A equation. But I mentioned that I should like to obtain classification of all such equations. But for that, I needed the theory of pseudo-differential operator. Pseudo-differential operator. It is a, we consider such homogeneous pseudo-differential operator, PD operator, in such form. You see, DI I any indices no more than M, but M any integers. But coefficient again in my approach, homogeneous polynomial. So as before, we obtain the finite sum. And uh, what we can say about this set? It is a non-commutative, associative graded algebra is additive homogeneous basis. And any homogeneous polynomial from U considered as multiplication operator. So, how we can describe the algebraic structure of uh, the algebra homogeneous pseudo differential operator? Very simple. You must describe commuter between multiplicative generators. And the formula, very nice, commuter D UK and UK plus one, but if you consider D minus one UK, you obtain such answer. Of course, the set of homogeneous differential operators is subalgebra. So we should like to obtain result about algebra of differential operator, but extend to the much bigger algebra of the differential operators. Next. As I mentioned in this algebra, monomials, monomials, it is a BDK, ADL, and follow the commuter rules, we can obtain such formula. But, attention, what is mean binomial coefficient KI? What is mean? Here, I, zero or positive, but K, any integer. So we have such uh, relation of duality. If K is negative, you go to this formula, obtain classical formula for again. But for negative K, the series which we mentioned is infinity. Okay? You see? We consider two monomials, but if K is negative, here we obtain the series. Okay. Definition. For any pseudo PZ operator, the coefficient A minus 1 is the residue of A denoted by res A, it is nothing else as 
differential polynomial, which is a coefficient uh, in set d minus 1. And we obtain the formula for any PD operator, commutator, commu we can describe in this form. More, if we consider this commutator and calculate residue, we obtain nothing else as application Z to residue. It is a simple, important formula, but it turns out on the associative algebra U0 T, there are fundamental skew symmetric bilinear form. You see? It is a homogeneous skew symmetric bilinear form of a C. But what is the important? What is why it is a differential? Why it is a skew symmetric bilinear form new? Because the algebra of PD operators it is a left modulo of polynomial. A polynomial, but in general. U0 D. It is it is not modulo of U0 D. So it is a such speciality. But we can introduce such formula using such simple answer. Such simple up. So it is Q symmetric bilinear form. But it turns out if you calculate value of this form of monomial, you obtain it is zero if M M Such. So if an M non negative, it is a zero. So we immediately obtain it is a skew symmetric formula, nothing else is symmetric in from point of view of super mathematics, where sigma A B equal minus one in degree N M so. So here we obtain uh, formula which is in the classical sense skew symmetric, but from uh, grading case, it is a super symmetric matrix. So, very important corollary. If you consider computer AB and calculate residue, you obtain that it is nothing else differential operator of our form. Here, let me remind you, very important, the D is the monomorphism. It is the, for application, this formula was very important. And the next, it turns out, it turns out, it is a skew symmetric form gives to us for cycle equation. For, it is exactly for cycle equation from point of view of uh, homology Lie algebra. Next. No, as, as usual, we can introduce for any PD operator positive part, which, which is the differential operator, and negative part. And, of course, our form, we can describe in such form. Next, very important step. It is a well-known step. When you go to PD operators, you obtain the possibility to construct square roots, roots any step. And it is it's what used in mathematical analysis many times. But in our case, let me let me show you if we consider our operator L we can construct PD operator satisfying the equation square root from L. But what for us important? Here all coefficients homogeneous polynomial weight n plus one. And we can calculate all coefficients using such simple recursion. You see, using what such special Binomial coefficient with initial condition. 
So you can see initial part. Of course, you can continue and obtain very interesting all the coefficients. It is a very important differential operators. You see, what is U2? This is the second derivative, U3. Three derivative. And so we obtain from L such family differential equation. Next step. We introduce square roots L and we can construct differential operator A to K. It is nothing else L in degree K, but what is in you? It is well known, but in this construction very important. We introduce differential operators, which is positive part of odd degree. You can check the lux operator, nothing else is A3. But now we have infinity family differential operator, and we can obtain homogeneous differential polynomial, homogeneous differential polynomial as residue of this operator. So this operator, it is differential operator and residue. After that, we obtain canonical KTV operators. It's very interesting what in the talk of Andrei Igrich, he mentioned canonical Maslow operators. But this canonical in the different sense, but uh, what we discussed this with uh, Sergei Dobrohotov, he, he should like to continue. There are some relations, but now, now, let us consider what is mean canonical. Canonical in such way. KDV operators, D to K plus 1. Let me remind, if you should like to obtain KDV operator, you calculate on the U. By definition, derivation to K minus 1 at U, it is nothing else, is commuter. But this commuter, it is a operator multiplication of this function. So, for this operator, work, of course, on differential polynomial, but it turns out we can extend to differential operator on the algebra of all pseudo-differential operator and obtain very nice result. It turns out we can calculate how work our operator on square roots and answer by this formula. You see. But in the, this part, of course, it is a not differential polynomial. It is a pseudo-differential. But formula, it is very important because we obtain immediately this formula. And uh, what we obtain from lemma 3, our skew-symmetric form transform PZ operators to differential operators. But it turns out this form commute. Commute this operator D to K minus 1. You see, uh, sigma AB a differential polynomial. So it is our evolutionary derivation, but it is nothing else as the value of our form where D to K minus 1 A, it is a PZ operators. It is very important. Next step. After that, using the property of our skew symmetric form, we obtain such polarity. It turns out the evolutionary operator 2k minus 1 for any k commute not only with d, but commute together. So, as a result, we obtain the canonical KZV structure. So, what does it mean? You see, in the left, we have our function U. It is an evolutionary derivation. 
as a result, we obtain some function, but this function nothing else minus 2d to b. But k, any natural number, and we obtain the canonical KTV hierarchy. Why I fixed your attention about this? If you consider the textbooks, in, you can obtain very different construction of KTV hierarchy. Different. And uh, if you should like to construct the theory, you, as we say, we can find some basis. After that, we can compare what is the relation between different description of KDV Rafchi. Now we can obtain the answer at first. At first. This equation we described explicitly and unique because all part of this equation we described explicitly. And of course, by definition, we can describe this in the operator's form and here you can find differential, it is a system of, differ, system of differ, differential equation, which you can see here. It is a system differential equation. Next step. We obtain operator d to k minus 1. But... So, I uh, de describe to you what is mean canonical KDV rupture. Next step. Universal novical and equation. Let us consider a evolutionary derivation in such form. Where we describe this canonically but introduce the coefficient. What does it mean universal? Turns out we consider this coefficient as algebraic independent. As we say, it is Novikov's coordinates. It is not complex numbers. It is a sum parameters. So we have such parameters. We obtain uh, derivation and obtain immediately that there are such differential polynomial which describe our evolutionary derivation. And if we consider universal Novikov N equation such that we should like to find U which is a stationary up to DC, we obtain immediately relation. You see, let me repeat. We know what is rho, this coefficient, but let me again repeat, it is a free parameters. As we say, it is a universal Novikov's coordinates. But using the relation that any differential polynomial start from uk minus 2, we can rewrite our differential equation in such nice form. 2n derivative, it is such differential equation with the three parameters. For using the Galileo transformation, we can consider alpha 2 is 0, and what we obtain, what is it? It is nothing else than a classical Newton equation with cubical potential. But uh, we can consider for other n, it is a derivation degree 4 and so so. 
the Noyko Fen equation is homogeneous ordinary nonlinear differential equation to n order with graded parameters. After that, follow the general idea. We what we can do? We consider polynomial, we consider differential ideal generated by polynomial and its deri derivative of our operator decay. After that, any element for you have the canonical projection is the result of elimination of variables UK, VIK, more than 2 n minus 1 using the different proposition ideal gen invariant with respect to all our evolutionary derivation. So we obtain the hierarchy computing operators on the factoring factoring and answer. What is factoring? By our construction we have in C3n these coordinates u o u1 u2 n minus 1 and n free parameters we have operators d1 and d 2 k minus 1 and such system of differential equation it is a universal noikos and direction and of course the First dynamical system, it is nothing else. The dynamical system related with Novikov N equation. What's important? We obtain a family of differential equation, but not a differential equation, but differential equation which is processes N first integrals, which we can obtain directly because it is exactly our differential form which we descri describe explicitly this is three parameters and you see for any fixed n we have h to n plus one to n big plus one but polynomial h to n plus one to n plus one algebraic independent so it is an integrable system integrable system of course we have such first integral for any n but only this algebraic independent after that it is a classic concept we obtain not only differential dynamical system we obtain dynamical system which is Liouville integrable because because and first integrals of Novikov N equation define polynomial mapping from C3N to CN. For fixed value of parameters, we obtain Liouville integral polynomial system. A few days ago, I gave the talk on the conference in Susan and show that it is not only Liouville integral, it is such system for which we can construct explicit solution using the theory of hyperelliptic function but here uh, I should like to uh, continue I have not so much time but let me mention it from general point of view we obtain dynamical system integrable from Liouville point of view but all this system has explicit solution so what, which, uh, what I mentioned through that in the case n is 1 we obtain exactly the Novikov's 1 equation coincide with Newton equation with cubic potential but of course you can consider not only n is 1 n is 2 and so so you obtain such system next it turns out it turns out we can construct explicitly Poisson bracket on one space. It is exactly a result from our uh, paper with Alexander Mikhailov. You see, it turns out 
if you change of coordinate and go from coordinate u, uh, u1, u2, this coordinate v, v obtain invertible polynomial change of variables dependent on the parameters. It's very important. Dependent on the parameters. It turns out in the new variables, equation of Novikov Iraqi are Hamiltonian system. Where Hamiltonian, you see, I described before. So it is Hamiltonian system. More, the problem to construct Poisson structure in the case of Novikov system is a well-known problem. For example, there was uh, first result of Novikov, after that was result of Novikov Ipogayevlensky, but now let me put all the answers which they introduced using the approach, let me repeat, quantum field theory. Let me show you how it looks from point of classical mechanics. Nothing else in our coordinates, the Poisson bracket, which is Christ explicitly using, let me repeat, approach to the classical mechanics. And next step. It turns out there are explicit invertible polynomial change of variables, new variables, which you can see by 25 formula, very simple. But as a result, you obtain the in U coordinates PP, we have Poisson bracket in the canonical form. In the canonical form. After that, I have uh, 10 minutes. No? Ten. Okay, it's enough uh, to show how we can apply this in the case of uh, free associative algebra and quantization. It turns out all results which I show to you in the first part immediately, directly transform in the case of free associative algebra. It is, was very nice. Let me show you. At first, before we consider the ring of polynomial. Now we can consider the free differential algebra where you know u0, u1, and so not compute. As specialization, you can consider matrix. And there are the matrix form of KDV, but it is more general. Let us consider, let me see, free, free differential algebra it turns out, thanks to formal algebra, we can introduce immediately square root and formula look the same in such form. After that, we can obtain, we can obtain the expansion in the series square root of Schrodinger operator. But now, what is the difference? You see, before was 6 u1 u, but now they divide 2 u1 u and 4 u u1. As a result, we obtain directly using square root of Schrodinger operator. Next. As I mentioned, we can, uh, similar to commutative case, we introduce non-commutative differential operator pro to Q as a residue and obtain explicit formula. It, again, you see, it is non-commutative density and obtain the equation of non-commutative KTV rupture can be written in the form. So, it turns out, it turns out, we can construct skew symmetric bilinear form in the case on free associative algebra. But what's the difference? Difference. 
different this. Before, when we can see the residue of computer, we obtain immediately the sigma AB. But now, no, we obtain additional term. But fortunately, this term we can describe in the term of commuter. It is exactly what mentioned in general approach Mikhailov. But now this, you can see this answer. And here, let me repeat one part of the Mikhailov's talk. If you should like to obtain a definition of density in local conservation law, you must introduce linear subalgebra of all commutator. You see, it is not ideal. It is a linear space. But after that, we obtain new linear space PO up to this and obtain corresponded quantum linear space and obtain follow our corollary that differential of our, our, our density is not zero but in the space corollary the projection in this our space of the polynomial constant of motion of non-commutative here KDV Iraqi. It turns out we can repeat step by step all construction which I described to you in details and obtain the situation in the case non-commutative, but as Mikhailov show the dynamical system in the free algebra it is nothing. You obtain infinitely many commuting Hamiltonians with algebraic independence. We, we must go, we must go to quantization and obtain at first non-commutative novel equation. You see? E, and obtain the element H is called first integral of non-commutative novel equation if action of operator sent to us to this factor space and again we obtain the explicit form of all first integrals first integrals but let me repeat in the case of free algebra we get infinitely many first integrals since they all algebraic independent so from physical point of view it is nothing it is, you have uh, it is nothing but what we can do? It turns out transformation, transformations, Tn and Cn, which I described before, lifted to the free associative algebra. To define the transformation Tn in the non-commutative case, we replace this in such form and obtain this form and obtain such change of change of coordinates and as a result we obtain quantization because we have Poisson structure follow the Heisenberg from Poisson structure we go to commuter and obtain you see I think it is my last slide the equation of quantum NKTV Rakchi can be represented as in Heisenberg form. You see? No, case N is 1. It is exactly what was doing by Dirk and Heisenberg. Uh, Dirk and Heisenberg. But what, how it looks in the case N is 2. You see? Explicit form. You see? We obtain, let me repeat, the canonical commuter. After that, follow the Geisenberg, go to differential operators and obtain partial differential operators. We obtain expression of commuting symmetrical quantum Hamiltonians in the form of commuting symmetric second of the differential operator. It is exactly very nice direct generalization 
of the step which was do, uh, doing by Dirk and Heisenberg. For any end, we obtain such answer. Questions? Mr. Matvejevich, thank you very much for an interesting talk. My question is uh, uh, with the connection of your note <coughs> about canonical Maslow operator and canonical Noyuk equations. If we take, Andrei Igorevich, if we take, uh, there is a lot of, there are a lot of uh, uh, Hamiltonian systems in this. Uh, uh, all Noyuk hierarchy is a, a system of Hamiltonian equations. If we take, um, uh, uh, for instance, um, uh, Hamilton Jacobi uh, and the Lagrangian manifold, then we can uh, use uh, Maslow canonical operator. This will be connection between Noikov hierarchy and Maslow canonical. Uh, yes. What do you think about it? Thank you. Let me fix it with your attention. What was main my goal? I should like to show that there are such methods which I demonstrate in the case of KDV. Of course, there are very natural generalization in the case KP in other. What are the two crucial steps? First crucial steps that we can go to the Lie algebra of PD operators in using square roots. In such a way, you know, we can obtain, for example, KP. So, at first, the second, there are very important skew symmetric bilinear form, which gives to us the possibility directly to construct the first integrals. And uh, of course, uh, I uh, thanks for your question. Of course, I hope that we and our colleagues continue this approach for in different cases. Let me repeat. Let us demonstrate how how work, how the new point of view. No such well known object as uh, KDV equation. Other questions? Comments? Now let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> it's time for lunch. <laughs>